We took the plate off the bottom of the intake manifold and I believe you can see, <laughs> look at all the oil that's in there. So I, I got a feeling the plate was leaking. Uh, it looked like someone had put a Felpro gasket on it. I don't think uh, stock they came with Felpro gaskets. So even with that, it was leaking. We just sprayed this now to degrease a little bit instead of sticking it in a tank yet because uh, there's no real reason to stick this in the tank. We're going to redo this and uh, you can see the bottom. The bottom was horrific. It was coated with oil as well. It's kind of baked on. We're going to make one out of aluminum so there was no reason to really stick this in the tank. Here's uh, some cuttings. Used a jigsaw and uh, a saber saw to cut off the big chunks. You can see there's still rough cuts. You got to do some more refining. And then I bought this Harbor Freight uh, Keep Your Hand Drill Straight jig uh, to drill through the holes, which I had marked in center punch using the gasket. Now, you can see I've still got a lot of extra metal that'll have to be ground off or sawed off. I, trying to do it with a, a jigsaw might take days to do. Now, I think I'm going to try and use a grinder and or a rotary rasp and see if I can't knock, knock off a lot of that. To uh, trim the plate down closer to actual size, I used a carbide tip table saw with wide spacing, teeth, teeth spacing. This is what I read is best for aluminum plate. And uh, putting the gasket on, I got a pretty good outline. I mean, I might be able to indent these, grind these in, but I don't know if I have to. And if I don't have to, I don't see the reason to. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to do this portion because that's where the uh, distributor is going to have to come through. But I think in the front and the back, uh, maybe a little bit clean up, but otherwise, okay. Uh, the holes still have to be uh, bored out a little bit larger. I've still got them undersized to make sure that everything was okay. I progressively increase the size uh, to where they are now and even though I center punch them and use that jig there's a couple of them that uh, aren't right on but I think when I bore them out to the next size they'll fit and or I'll just use a file to make sure I get them where they need to be. A little more touch up on the table saw with a carbide tip and uh, got a pretty good plate I think can round off some of the corners a little bit, clean it up, but I don't think I have to make all the indents because it looks like it's going to clear everything. And I'm not worried about that little bit of lip underneath catching oil. It's a lot better that than uh, having it suck oil in like it used to. So all in all, it looks pretty good. Okay, so I uh, polished the flange surface and then I cleaned it with um, lacquer thinner. 
And I did the same thing with the bottom of the plate, which is going to get flipped over and then attached to the flange surface. And I did that with 800 uh, emery. And the same thing after I uh, papered it, I wiped it all down with alcohol. Now, I went in the direction of the you can see, so it's it's not going outward, it's always going along the lines. One of the problems is these gaskets blow out, and this is the old one that came out. And you can see it, it in certain spots, it goes out to the edge. And that's probably why it blows. Also, uh, if you don't have uh, a surface it can grab to a little bit it's probably going to slide out now the gasket sealer I'm going to use a gasket sealer with it too so you have to get one that's gasoline resistant because this is gasoline uh, environment intake manifold and one that's going to be um, semi-permanent and not slide out not cause it to slide out So from the research I did, uh, I'm getting this Permatex Moto Seal gasket maker, fuel resistant, and um, I didn't get this at first because I thought, okay, it's just another RTV. But I went online and I looked at the uh, factual sheet, and this isn't RTV per se. Uh, this is a rubber, as opposed to a silicone rubber, and that's probably why it's fuel resistant and it won't be as slippery as the silicone usually is. So I think this is gonna work great for this. I have to apply a little bit to each surface. So I put it on here, uh, put it on here, I'll put it on both sides of the new gasket, then I'll put the gasket on and torque it all down. One of the things I'm gonna to do too is because uh, I showed you the way these go, I wanna make sure that I go around the holes because in some of these holes there really isn't much area left for it to seal so you definitely want to at least go on the inside and or around the holes and the gaskets they have that blue line but it doesn't go around the holes which is probably why as good as these gaskets are these don't work all the time either Okay, so on the flange surfaces, both on the aluminum plate and on the intake manifold, I put the gasket sealer all the way around and around the holes. However, on the gasket, on both sides of it, I put it just around the holes and let the blue uh, Felpro stuff do its job in between. And I'm gonna put these on and then I have to torque them. Okay, so the plate is attached and all the bolts are torqued down according to the sheet. It occurred to me one of the other things you could do is actually mark the numbers next to the bolt holes and then follow that. Uh, that might be a simple way to do it. Now you're supposed to do, the, these are uh, 7 sixteenths or 11 millimeter. 11 millimeter is just a tad bigger than 7 sixteenths. But you go to 48 inch pounds then 84 inch pounds, and then you recheck at 84. And rechecking, they did have to be all tightened, maybe a quarter of a turn to get back to 80, 84 inch pounds. Then I did a third recheck, and the third time they were already at 84. So uh, as you squeeze the gasket down, it's going to lose a little bit. But uh, it's in. Uh, final product looks pretty good. 
I tried it on the engine and there's clearance, everything fits.